What is up, Midway Mayhem fans? This is Dan, and we have Lauren. <laughs> Lauren is here, and we are at a brand new park today, Knobles. Neither of us have ever been here before. There's a lot of great attractions and food. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. I am here, guys. Yeah, I mean, she always shows up in the food videos. I'm here for the coasters. We're still gonna have some fun. Let's go. One of the neater things we have here is the Knobles Campground. Yes, you can actually stay here at Knobles, right over that way. So if you have a tent or a cabin, it's a nice little place to get some rest. All right, so want to know something really cool about Knobles? They're pet friendly, and we have an awesome doggy right here. And believe it or not, you can take the animals on a couple of the rides too. It's amazing. Our very first big roller coaster here of the day is going to be the Phoenix. Now, this attraction is a legend. I mean, literally, it's been around for years and years and years, and I'm excited to finally get a chance to do it. Phoenix and that was great. That was probably one of the smoothest wooden coasters that I've ever been on. Massive airtime. Yeah. There was like 10 or 12 spots. 
that's where I got super air time. Yeah, as you can see in the video, we are flying out of our seat. <laughs> and you guys know, I'm not a huge fan of rides that beat me up. This ride does not beat you up. They take care of it very well. It's a legend. It really is a legend of a coaster, and I'm very happy that the Phoenix is running phenomenally, and I can't wait to do it again. In fact, I want to go do another ride. Let's go. Let's go. If you're a fan of antique cars, the ones that use real gas, they've got you covered here with Gasoline Alley. By far, one of the craziest attractions we have here is called Power Surge, and I'll show you why. The whole arm actually turns, as well as the ride vehicles. Beyond nuts. That is one big log right there. And it's old, 220 years old. And this attraction right here is called Stratosphere, which is a drop tower. Just a little bit rainy, just a little bit. And then there's this crazy looking wooden coaster known as Twister. second wooden coaster of the day is done, Twister. And in my personal opinion, that was pretty crazy. I mean, there were some good lateral Gs. What'd you think? Um, I definitely enjoyed it. Um, very smooth. There were some rough spots, um, but I also like the double lift hill. That was very neat. It's um, unique. Yeah, very unique. Um, I also like how both rides, this and the Phoenix, had the tunnel included. That was yeah. pretty nice. Yeah, I like it. Now, it did have some good airtime as well. Uh, but overall, scale of 1 to 10, I would give this one maybe an 8. Okay, I'll take that. Yeah, 8, 8 and a half, something like that. But uh, good attraction, we're on our way to the other ones. Next up on our food sample tour is going to be the Rib BQ place. And they have baked potatoes. See, it says over here, Knoebel's Potato Barn. So they have a bunch of different ones. We're getting the one with some pulled pork. Yeah. Only after a couple minutes, here comes the potato. Yeah, look at that thing. Covered in pork. We got a nice Pepsi with it also. You look a little excited, I think. <laughs> I'm so hungry. Well, the moment has arrived and Lauren is about to chow down on this potato. Look at that thing though. It is literally covered in pork. 
We got some sour cream on there as well, and uh, let's give it a try. Now, I will say it's a very heavy potato. Uh, they don't skimp on the size of the potato. No, and again, price is cheap. Potato yeah. itself is like three bucks, right? Yeah, and then you can also add uh, toppings for a little extra, like uh, bacon bits, jalapenos. We chose the pulled pork with the cheese, and of course, the sour cream. So. Of course. Yeah, so let's try these. All right. I'm amazed by the proportion size though. Like literally, that thing is huge. You also said it was piping hot. Uh, yeah, very good pulled pork, very moist, flavorful. You know, it doesn't have a ton of barbecue sauce as you would normally see, but I still like it. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, I'm mouthwatering over here. Uh, my turn, please. Sorry, I didn't mean to be so rude, Lord. I'm just literally salivating over this thing, man. But look at this cheese. So we have nacho cheese over here off to the side. I'm gonna get that bite. Nacho I, cam. So I wanted some of the cheese, pulled pork, and potato. Holy hell, <laughs> Hey, we have younger viewers on here, Dan. I'm sorry, H-E double ho hockey sticks. How about that? All right, so let's talk about the pork. Pork is incredibly moist, like what you said. I hate getting pulled pork where it literally feels like it's dry, like it's gonna fly away. Moist, tons of barbecue, barbecue flavor, but it's not overpowering in the barbecue. Uh, the cheese is good, adds a nice little uh, kind of secondary to it, and then of course you get the uh, starch from the potatoes. But overall, that's awesome, man, and I love the price. Let's finish it. Knoebel's Haunted Mansion. Hmm, I wonder if it's as scary as we think it may be. What do you think, Lauren? I don't know, I'll have to try it out, I mean... Let's go. Alrighty guys, so we just got done with the Haunted Mansion and... Um, yeah. It was, it was a little scary. Yeah, it was a little scary. I mean, you had a little scared too, didn't there you? There was a jump scare in there. It's about, uh, towards the end of it. Not gonna give anything away, but surprisingly enough, uh, this is one of those, it's an older style haunted attraction, so you can pretty much guess where the scares are gonna be. Yeah. I didn't anticipate that one. No, no. I mean, you always have your classic, you know, bird with the horn, but it's a little different. Like you said, old school with the, you know, the props, but I know it's classic rides. So. And it's like an individual seater too, so you go one person or probably two people at a time, and that's yeah. it. But, uh, neat haunted attraction. Scale of one to ten, I would give it maybe a seven and a half to an eight. Take I that. love it though. We're on our way to the next one though. Who doesn't love character meet and greets? Lauren, do you want to go meet Cosmo? Yeah. Go meet Cosmo. Hi, Cosmo, how you doing? We love character meet and greets. This right here is called the Paratrooper, and it's a ride that spins you round and round, puts you at kind of a neat angle where you get a little bit of airtime at the top, and then the G-Force is down at the bottom. One of our friends, Drew, would absolutely hate this ride. I like it, though. If you guys are a fan of the Himalayan or Matterhorn bobsled style rides, they have one here called Cosmotron, and it's indoors, completely indoors. So the music is gonna be blasting, and hopefully we're gonna have some awesome lighting in there too. Well, we just did the Cosmotron, which was definitely interesting. What do you Ooh, think? This is my favorite type of ride. Uh, you know, I know you like coasters, but this is my favorite, favorite type of ride. Uh, Matterhorn, Himalaya, whatever you want to call it. This one was A+. It was in the dark, strobe lights, lasers, everything you could ask for. Yeah, I really liked it. I gotta say it's my favorite ride of this style, and uh, I'm glad it's here. It's very different having it inside yeah, and definitely. completely pitch black. Yeah. <laughs> awesome stuff, though. We're on our way to the next attraction. Up next is one of the most unique roller coasters on the planet, Flying Turns, which is a trackless roller coaster like a bobsled, but it's wooden. Alrighty guys, so we just got off of Flying Turns and wow, what an amazing roller coaster. What did you think? I definitely liked that ride. It was definitely one of a kind. Um, from what I felt, it was kind of like a roller coaster with a water slide element. Um, definitely felt like that when you're going down with the twos, but definitely unique and I really enjoyed it. Yeah, and we went really high up on the yeah. wall too. I mean, <laughs> literally almost like tipping point, which yeah. is kind of interesting. This ride took a while to finally get in operation. I'm glad that it is finally operating though. It is amazing and truly something unique. Uh, I really can't say any much more no. of it. On our way to the next one now. One of my favorite flat ride attractions are the Flyers and Knoebels has some of the best of them in the world. These ones can really whip. As you can see that guy right there getting real sideways. And I'm gonna do it right now. All right, so just did the Flyer and it's really awesome. I love these attractions of course. This one is unique because it's the only one in the world it spins this direction, which is clockwise. All the other ones are counterclockwise, and you can do some serious whipping on this. Other parks, they frown upon it. 
Knobles, they endorse it. And of course, one of the most historic carousels in the world, this one, the Grand Carousel. It is a brass ring carousel where you can physically grab all the brass rings. So we're on the carousel now. Hopefully we're gonna get some rings. Hopefully maybe even a brass ring, we'll see. This one under the things you don't see in a theme park normally, a church. Here's one of the other carousels that the park has, and this one is an old one. As you can see, 28 horses were carved in 1912, and here's the carousel. Check it out, we have an original organ just off to the side. Very beautiful. Speaking of the Grand Carousel, we have right here the Carousel Museum. Free admission. Let's go check it out. And right off the bat, we have something right here saying brass ring. Thank you. All the carousel horses, yeah. This is really kind of neat. I believe these are hand painted too. I know. Triple Decker Carousel. Yeah. And then check it out right over here is the Carousel Museum. This is something kind of neat. You can definitely tell this is some old stuff. And these are some of the uh, different figures are on the carousel. It shows, uh, of course, information about them, when they got them, and all that jazz. Camels, horses, a lot of mementos all over the place. Really something kind of pretty in here, guys. They have sections of old carousels literally right here up on the wall as well. Another section there, another one over there. See, jumping horse is 1910 and all that. Some of these are gorgeous and I bet you they are very, very expensive. Extremely expensive. Look at that one. There's even a dog one. Yeah, there's a dog one. And some of the signage up over here. Return rings. That would be an amazing sign to have. Yeah. Yeah, really uh, kind of neat history inside the Carousel Museum. And that's going to pretty much do it for us. So if you want to own your own roller coaster, you can buy one here at Knobles. <laughs> Check out this neat model set. Pretty awesome, it even comes with an operator panel. And the award for coolest location for a kid's coaster goes to, to Nobles. Look at this guys, it's your standard kid's coaster, but it literally goes over a flume ride. It's beautiful. Feed me paper, that's kind of interesting. And the park does have several recycling bins here. They're themed to animals and other things like that. And here we go, guys. We're in the station for Impulse now. About to get our very first ride, front row. Isn't that weird? Check it out.
just got off of Impulse, which is a crazy compact coaster. What do you think of it, honestly? Uh, honestly, these type of rides are pretty interesting. Um, not too keen on them. Everyone instantly gives me like this headache right in here. Um, you know, they're kind of a rougher ride, but I mean, what did you think about it? I actually thought it was good. I didn't find it too rough. Yes, there's a little bit of uh, shuffle, I would say. That's all I can say about it. I don't consider it rough. I don't have a headache from it or anything else like that. Do I think it's the best ride in the park? No, I think the wooden coasters are actually better. I think Phoenix yeah. is probably the best ride that we did today, but of all the coasters, this one's all right. It's a decent attraction. Hey, it's a steel coaster, yeah. which is something uh, that's kind of nice. Scale of one to 10, my personal opinion, I'd give it maybe an eight, eight and a half or something like that. Lauren, I don't think you're gonna have that same <laughs> kind of feeling. I can't it. But yeah, overall, <laughs> we still had fun though. And that's Impulse. Next up on the list of awesome food items that we're going to try is right here at the Candy Apple Orchard. And we've heard that there is an awesome slush, and that's what we're going to get. Again, prices are not bad, and this fine lady is making our slush. It's about to come out. It looks pretty good. And we've heard a lot of positive things about this one, so hopefully it's good. Thank you. All right, so we've gotten our slush, and that looks pretty tasty. Nice and cold, right? Icy? Yeah. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Definitely get that apple flavor. It's something great for summer. I know it's dark outside, but it's definitely something I can see on a uh, you know a day that's 80 degrees out. Yeah, or just even like tonight. It's a nice night. Yeah. You're out with friends or family or something like that. And you want something refreshing. Well, according to you, that's pretty good. Yeah. Let me go ahead and try if you don't mind. So uh, let's go ahead and try this out again. Consistency looks pretty good. Uh, not too much ice, where it's like an iceberg in there. But let's try it. I feel like I just drink applesauce. <laughs> I'm serious, it's like drinking Why? It. Why would you drink applesauce? I mean, I don't it's know, not apple cider or anything. <laughs> it says apple cider. It reminds me of applesauce. I like it though. It's really good. Well, I don't know whether we're at a ski resort or if we're still part of Knobles, but they have this awesome lift chair. It takes you all the way up the hill and back around. And I think that's something I want to do here next. Of course, we have one of those river boat rides here with the big drop, and it's called Skaloosh. See, I wasn't making it up. The ride is actually called Skloosh. Knobles kind of started as a place where you could go to a watering hole to cool off, and they still have a water park here. It's just not in operation while we were visiting. Another one of those you can't call yourself an amusement park unless you have it. Here we have bumper cars and they're called scooters. All right, so Laura and I just did the bumper cars and best Hi. bumper cars yeah. ever, like ever. The sign says outside, the yeah. best bumper cars in America? Yeah, I don't okay. know, it says it's a good bumper car. I think it's amazing. Let's put it this way. Normal bumper cars, you feel like you're going one mile an hour. This, yeah. you're going fast enough that the cars drift, yeah. and it literally feels when you make contact with somebody, even though you're not supposed to go head on, people get turned around. If you hit them head on, you're gonna feel like you were just in a yeah. car accident. I mean, I'm not joking. My yeah. knee yeah. hit the dash just a little bit, and I was like, ow! She rammed me it's into the wall. Fault. It's not my fault. Absolutely, it was your fault. It's not my fault. But best bumper cars I've ever done, I love. One of the bigger icons of the park is this giant Ferris wheel, pretty much right at the front entrance. One of the weirdest attractions here is called the Looper, and let's show you why. So check this out. This ride goes round and round and round, but two people can fit in this, and they control the spinning. So if you get it just right, you're gonna be pretty much like a wheel on the road. Fandango, which is a uh, spinning kind of pendulum ride, goes back and forth, it's a lot of fun. Yet another flat ride over here. We have something that's similar to a Gravitron, puts you at an angle, spins you around and around, you feel the G-forces. It's kind of interesting though. It's on a flatbed trailer. Still works. So I don't know if any of you have seen one of these attractions before. It looks like it's just normal, right? Spinning around and around. Oh my, does that change though. And you'll see in just a second. So check it out. 
It goes up and down, and it's not doing it very slowly. We're talking, you're getting airtime at the top of these hills. Add this one again to the list of crazy attractions here at Knobles. This right here, it spins you upside down and spins you around and around. Looks like rocket ships. I don't really know how to describe it, other than just insane. All right, so you're a fan of race cars that drift and theme parks. How can you mingle the two? Well, you have something called the Whipper, which is a flat ride, very, very old flat ride, but it spins you around, but you drift around the corners. Flying Tigers, which is a flat ride for kids. They get in this little airplane, and it's kind of like a whip, built by Zamperla. And there's actually one of these over at Owa that just opened up. So they're getting a little bit more popular. And of course the park has a wave swinger, as seen here. Add this to the list of you can't call yourself an amusement park unless you have a tilt-a-whirl. Well, guess what? Knobles has one. <laughs> I will say this, there are a lot of kids rides here. In fact, they have an entire section of the park with a bunch of them, which is a good thing, just like most theme parks. But they do have some other kiddie rides around some of the major attractions. So while mom and dad is doing a coaster, the kids can do this. Another twirl and hurl style attraction, we have the Rotojet. Spins you around, goes up in the air. Kids like it, adults like it, I like it. Here's yet again another twirl and hurl style ride. If you've ever seen the movie The Sandlot, this is that ride. Teacups, we have them here. And here we have the Paradrop, which is a kid's attraction. Takes them to the top and drops them down kind of slowly. A little fun attraction for them though. World's slowest drop tower. If you guys remember earlier in the video where we had the pig that said, feed me paper. Well, here's another interesting animal. And it's a lion, but it's a water fountain. It's getting a little bit later in the evening and we were getting a little bit hungry, so we decided to grab some more food items. And Lauren, what do we have right here in front of us? We got a hot dog, pierogies, fresh cut fries, and a traveling taco. A traveling, traveling taco. taco. AKA a Frito boat, right? Yes. Okay, <laughs> so uh, we're gonna go ahead and try it. I'm really interested in the traveling taco as well as the pierogies. We know what hot yeah. dogs and fries take like, do, yeah. but let's go ahead and try those and see what they're like. All right. No, so you don't need forks for that. Go ahead and grab Not it. Really. Now, what kind of pierogi is it? Yeah, simple one. Because I honestly don't know. I just ordered just pierogies. A, a potato one. So just like an original one, but it's really good. The filling is great. It's very nicely seasoned. Um, but usually you pair this with sour cream, but you know, I like it just how it is. Okay, good deal. And then of course we have the traveling taco. You go like this, like chug chug. Yeah, I don't think that's how you do that. That's not how this works. So it's like kind of a layer dip. It has like beans, sour cream, cheese, and the meat. It's also got the Fritos in here, but I think they're kind of far down. So we'll just. Yeah. That's right. I'm all, as long as it has most of the toppings, yeah. I don't care too much about the Fritos. Oh yeah. I say it's not hot. It's not cold out. No. But something like this is still good on just an average day. It's pretty much a taco and a Frito. You know, okay. Mixed together, so it's definitely good. Good stuff. All right, so my turn now, and the pierogies look really good. Um, now, have you ever had a pierogi? I have had a pierogi. I think okay. I had a cheese pierogi. All right. Uh, but I don't think I've ever had just a potato pierogi. So. That is so good. <laughs> like the seasoning, like what you said, is good. Uh, it's like mashed potatoes inside like this dough. Um, really soft, really warm, extremely tasty actually. It's really good. Then we have the traveling taco. And again, look at that. Look how much cheese Ooh, is in look there. Look at all that filling. Yeah. So you gotta dig a little bit to try to get something out of there, but... Um, you know, it's not as messy as a normal taco. No. But it's just as good. <laughs> I'll tell you that. That is really good. Cheese is fresh. Uh, the meat in there is fresh as well. Good flavoring, good seasoning. And of course, Fritos. Can't go wrong. All right, so we still have one more roller coaster left to do. We're gonna do it now.
Alrighty guys, so we just got off of Black Diamond, an indoor roller coaster, kind of. I guess we can say it's a roller coaster because it's on its track. It does uh, go on its own. It qualifies. It qualifies, yes. but it's more a dark ride in my opinion. Uh, of course, theme to the mining and everything in Pennsylvania, mining is a big thing. So they kind of played on that with that. Um, scale of one to 10, I give it maybe a seven and a half to an eight. It's not the most exciting attraction, but it is a good one to get off the midway. Yeah. It's a little, a little bit of a classic ride, so. Yeah, a classic ride. Anything else you can note about the attraction though, or no? Uh, a lot of the figures were kind of older figures, but that kind of adds to the nostalgia of the ride. Yeah, I agree so. as well. But good. Black Diamond's all done. We're all done with our coasters. All right, so it is that time of the night. We are getting our last rides, and I think we're gonna do the very first roller coaster we rode today, the Phoenix. Well, guys, that is gonna do it for our full tour and review here from Knobles. And Lauren, what is your honest opinion about this park and our day? Well, I had a great day. The weather was nice. Um, I liked all the rides. Phoenix, number one. Yeah. Uh, I say first row on that one is the smoothest for me. Yeah. Um, bunch of different rides. I like the Cosmotron and Indoor Matterhorn. Uh, but the park is really quaint, very nice. People are nice, the food's great, so I definitely have a great time. It's a bigger park though. I mean, they say it's the largest free admission park and it is huge. Yeah. And they have a ton of attractions here. I mean, literally roller coasters, flat rides, stuff for the kids. And then we have the food and the food was incredible too. What was your favorite food item? Waffle ice cream sandwich. That was delicious. Yeah, I agree on that one. That was probably the best thing that we had. But all the food items that we tried were awesome. Roller coasters were great. Knobles, awesome place. We can see why this gets so many golden ticket awards. I think we're going to be back, don't you? Yes, yeah, definitely going to be back. Alrighty, guys. So if you like what we do, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter at Midway Mayhem. Midway Mayhem. And we will see you out on the Midway.